just when you thought you couldn't get any better from Boss, you just did. Hi, I'm Mike Mendock with Boss Products, and today I have the privilege of introducing you to the brand new Boss Snow Raider Mag. The Mag is a bigger, more powerful piece of equipment that comes with an arsenal full of attachments that are going to help you, the snow and ice contractor, restore order. Ever since Boss released our original Snow Raider, we've received feedback, comments from you, the customer, on how we can make this design better. Well, the mag is proof that we put those ideas and suggestions into play. Now we're gonna start by stepping through the base unit and give you an idea how this is gonna quickly redefine snow and ice control, making your company more efficient and more profitable. And if we're talking about the power of this new mag, there's no sense in going any further unless we talk about the new engine. So underneath this easily removable front cover, what we have is a Kohler EFI engine, 26 and a half horsepower, with an electronic throttle body that maximizes power and increases fuel efficiency. And to keep you on the job site longer, we've increased the capacity of the gas tank to eight gallons. We have an external fill here on the side, and we've added a nice feature. The gas cap has a tab that locks it to the stem. You install a lock on the side, your gas is secure on the job site. The Snow Raider base unit has four wheel drive for optimal traction with speeds of eight miles per hour forward and five miles per hour in reverse. Now, obviously with a bigger, more powerful machine, we need a bigger, more stout charging system. So this unit is set up with a 50 amp charging system and the battery is located under this front hood. To get access to it, you release a quick pin on each side of the hood and watch this. The lid automatically opens with an automated spring pin, giving you access to that 690 coal cranking battery. Another really nice feature of this design is the serviceability and access you get to certain things that you're gonna to wanna to maintain on a regular basis. By taking the cover off the front, by lifting the hood, I have access to the fuel filter, the mega fuse. This is also where I'm gonna be filling the four gallon reservoir tank for the hydraulic system. And as you can see here, you also have access to the hydraulic filter. All of these things and the ease are gonna make your service team more apt to do these things on a regular basis. So we've got this big, powerful machine, right? But we gotta remember, there's an operator, there's a member of your team that's gonna be working on this thing. So there's things that we've incorporated into the design that are designed for safety and for comfort. Now let's start off by looking at some of the safety features of this. And the biggest one is gonna be the operator presence plate that you actually step on when you're operating the machine. By stepping on this machine, the whole entire system will operate as it should. You can move the machine and run all the implements. As you step off this, it will keep the machine running, but it runs at a low idle. Now there's two reasons for that. One is, of course, fuel economy. You're doing other things, why burn the fuel? But it's nice that it does run at a low idle because if you wanted to trailer this thing, you can be off the machine, running the paddles, loading it onto a trailer. You can also be jockeying the machine in position to attach to one of the attachments. So it's a nice feature that you're able to run it while stepping off the plate. Getting back on, looking at some of the other safety features we have, we have reflective striping on the back sides, obviously so that anybody from the back can visibly see the operator. But we also have three 1200 lumen LED headlights. One projects to the rear, two project to the front. The front ones, of course, illuminate your job surface. This will do the same in reverse, but it also makes everybody aware that you're there. Now, another one of the biggest suggestions we had from the previous version was it needed a parking brake. That's exactly what we added. And when you put that on, it actually stops the machine. If you try to engage it, it would shut it off. Now, as for the comfort of this machine, all of the paddles and everything here are an easy ergonomic reach for the operator. So the controls for the steering of the machine, the operation of any attachments, it's all easy to reach. We also add things for comfort, such as a large oversized cup holder, so you can keep a nice warm mug of hot chocolate there to keep your operators warm during the cold temperatures. But I think the biggest feature that is really gonna be a big game changer is this, is the heating system that we kind of built into it. As the engine builds heat, it's captured underneath the main dash, and we have a louvered vent right here at your hands. So that engine heat is actually getting funneled onto the hands of the operator, so that as they're sitting on these padded grips, their hands are staying warm. But we take it a little further than that. Further down the machine, we also have another vent that is mid-thigh, 
Opening that brings warmth to the operator's legs. And then even further, we have the third vent, which brings warmth to the operator's feet. So these are just some of the things and the touches we've added to make comfort and safety a priority in this design. Now, another nice feature that we actually kind of adopted from the original Snow Raider was this thigh pad. And beneath the thigh pad is another little compartment that you can store things. In fact, one of the things that we added to this mag is this nice little manual tube inside. So if you want to keep the operator's manual, it's great for your operators to have that as a reference. You could also store some small tools or something that you want to keep out of the elements. But with this thigh pad cover off, you also have access to the dipstick for the engine oil, as well as the fill for the engine oil. So we put a lot of thought into making this thing simple and easy to maintain. Now, this piece of equipment is great to leave at the job site, but there's certainly gonna be a lot of times and a lot of customers that are gonna to wanna to transport this from site to site. So again, we put this into the design and what we've incorporated is four tie-down points actually into the framing of the machine to secure it to the trailer as you transport. So there's two at the rear and there's two at the front. And because Boss knows that this Snow Raider mag is gonna be used out in the elements where corrosion can be a big problem, we of course have designed this with a completely stainless steel chassis. Now I've said attachments several times in the video already to this point, but before we dive into that, there's some pretty critical advancements and design changes that we made to this that are gonna make it a lot easier and longer lasting for those attachments. One of those is what we're gonna be calling the lift group. Now the lift group is gonna comprise of the lift cylinder, which is behind this enclosed container, as well as this coupler, which attaches to the implement. Now what's important about this is we've designed some features into this that you're probably familiar with, like float mode. So any of the implements can be put into float mode by activating a valve in the lift cylinder, all right? That gives you 17 degrees of downward movement in the float position. We also have deforce with this. Again, something that we brought in from other products. So you can put downward force when plowing, when using the broom, or when using the blower. So another nice feature there. We also have the lift capabilities of 25 degrees. But again, getting back to the, the self-contained lift cylinder, we put that in there to keep it out of the elements. All right, so it's not getting the corrosion and all the, the abuse on the seals from things like salt and things like that. So it's nice that it's enclosed. But this being enclosed is also there because at some point you're gonna be putting an exact path drop spreader on this unit. And that salt is gonna drop directly out of the bottom of that unit to the ground surface. Now, if you remember, the exact path on the original Snow Raider had what we called the mustache. And it was a funneling system that went around the bottom side of the spreader and actually dispersed the salt around the framing for the plow. But since we were allowed to design this from the bottom up, we made that a minimal interference and we do not, no longer need that mustache funneling the salt. So that salt can drop directly to the ground. So that is the idea behind our entire lift group on this Snow Raider mag. Now, let's take a look at those attachments we've been teasing you about. So the next attachment we're gonna look at is the VXT plow for the Snow Raider mag. Now, XT plows are familiar with anybody that knows Boss truck plows. And the XT signifies that flared wing design at the top. And the flared wing actually causes that snow to roll and throw farther off the sidewalk. So it was a good idea to bring that design down into this smaller model for the Snow Raider mag. But a lot of the other features that we have on the XT truck plows are incorporated in this design as well, which means both wings are fully functional, independent, goes into scoop, goes into V, goes into angle right, angle left. We've also incorporated our form cutting edges on the bottom. The snow catcher collects snow, and on the ends of each wing, we have a curb guard, which protects the end of the blade as you are rubbing up and curbing against obstacles. The center section has the hinge section with the vertical hinge pin. And you'll notice that the hinge lugs each have that 1 8 inch drilled hole for applying grease to service and maintain that pin. Now this is a full mold board trip design, which protects the plow, protects the machine, protects the operator in the event that you hit an obstruction, the blade chips over. Okay, so again, standard with a lot of our other designs. Next, I want to show you the back side of the blade and look at the cylinders, which makes back dragging much more effective with this smaller blade. So on the back side of this blade, we have two dual acting cylinders, one on each wing. The cylinders can actually make this blade move in all the traditional V-plow positions. You have scoop, you have V, you have full angle right, you have full angle left. 
but the dual acting cylinders also give you the added benefit of keeping the wings rigid, allowing you to scrape. And remember, we've got the added benefit of deforce on the Snowrider Meg through the lift group. So now, the combination of the lift group downforce and the locking angle cylinders scrapes down even better. Now I'm gonna get on the machine, I'm gonna raise the plow up and kind of show you the functionality of this V-plow. Next, we want to talk about the straight blade options for the Snow Raider Mag. Attaching it is going to be exactly like you've seen before with the other attachments. You line it up, you connect it, you put your hydraulic lines on. But this is only going to have two lines and you've got six fittings up here. Just make sure that you're aligning the male and the female vertically on two of the fittings and you'll be fine. Now this comes in two widths. You've got the four foot and the five foot width. This is exactly the ATV plow that we sell for ATVs and UTVs. So remember, everything that we sell for that line is gonna fit this. That includes snow deflector, wing extensions, box wings. We also have the urethane edge kit that will fit on this model. Now the blade itself is a good back drag plow as is. But remember, Snow Raider Mag has deforce. So when you apply that with a straight blade, you have a very effective back dragging tool here. So the next attachment we're gonna show you is something that we are extremely excited about here at Boss. The STX 48 Snow Thrower. Now this is the first snow thrower with the Boss badge on it. So we're really proud of this. And we're confident that you, the customers, are gonna be excited about this as well because you asked for it. You gave us those comments, those suggestions, and this was right at the top of the list. So let's take a look at this thing. It's a 48 inch snow thrower, 25 inches high. It's hydraulically driven. So this thing has all the power that you're gonna to need to clear that snow. And with all snow throwers, as you're using it, there's gonna be times you're gonna get chunks of ice, you're gonna get debris stuck in that auger. Well, this system is hydraulically driven, which means it's got relief valves on it. So if something gets stuck in there, the relief valve opens, nothing gets damaged. Plus, there's no shear pins any longer. You're not having to go in there with tools and replace a shear pin. So a lot of benefits right there. Now let's look at this chute. From the operator's position, I can redirect the chute in 210 degrees of rotation. So as you're in the operator's cockpit, you can throw that thing to the front, to the side. Actually, you can throw it a little bit in reverse as well. The only thing we limit to, of course, is we don't want it thrown on the operator. Now, up at the top, the angle can be adjusted and you can give that throw in that two foot radius in front of the machine, or you can open it up and get 35 feet of throw by tipping it all the way up. Now, a nice feature that I like on this is the fact that the top of the chute is actually a poly plate. And why we like that in there is you're picking up debris, you're picking up granule, and it's actually getting pounded against the top of the chute. This poly here is gonna be slick, but it's also replaceable, all right? So with a couple tools, you can replace this, renewing everything to new. So let's take a moment and look at the quick disconnect fittings we have mounted on the Snow Raider Mag and get a better understanding of what the fittings are and what they're for. Now, as you know, all the attachments that we connect to this are hydraulically driven. And when you're putting a straight blade plow or a V-blade plow onto the Snow Raider Mag, all you need is hydraulics to angle the blade, which is the four fittings we have here on the left. You have two females, you have two males. But we have other attachments like the thrower and the broom that need a higher flow rate of fluid, which is why we have a high flow circuit, which is on the left. These are larger diameter and they hook to the hose accordingly. So what this does is give you the high flow rate you need to make those implements work effectively. So these are some of those small details that really kind of make this an easier machine to service, operate, and use long-term. And one of those things is right here. We have a pillow back bearing on both ends of the auger shaft. At the bottom, 
we've got adjustable skid shoes on each side of the box. Now those are there so that you can adjust it as everything wears down and gives you a better scraping to the ground surface. Again, these are also replaceable. And we even give you this nice little chute cleanout tool for getting obstructions cleared. Next, let's take a look at the urethane edge at the bottom and give you an idea what that's all about. So along the entire bottom edge of this snow thrower, we have a urethane edge. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why use urethane? Well, there's actually two reasons for that. Urethane does a fantastic job of scraping and there's longevity there. But another reason is it is somewhat flexible. And as you're using this piece of equipment on sidewalks or anywhere where there's deviations in the surface, that little give, that little bend in that urethane edge is gonna kind of prevent that shock load from going into the piece of equipment, into the machine or into the operator. So that's why we like urethane here. Now the urethane edge is going to wear over time, okay? It's replaceable, but what we've done with this is we've made it a flippable urethane edge. You simply unbolt it and you flip it over and you have an entire other edge to use. So as I mentioned, this is a hydraulically driven snow thrower, but the hydraulic motor actually engages the auger through a chain and a couple gears. In time, that drive chain is gonna stretch, which means you're gonna have to make some adjustments there. With four screws, you remove this side cover, it gives you access to that drive chain and there's an adjuster in there to create the tension that you need. And another thing that I'm really proud of is the fact that this little rubber cap, which sits directly above that drive chain, can act as a lubrication port. So what I mean by that is by taking this plug out, flip it upside down, you fill it with your lubricant, you place it back over the hole and run the system and it lubricates the chain. Very simple, easy to maintain. Next, let's take a look at the cockpit and get an idea of how this thing operates. So as I step up into the cockpit to operate the STX-48, there's a couple controls on the dash I just kind of want to call out to you. On your left-hand side, you're going to see a dual acting switch that has an F and an R at it. Now this is what actually activates the auger screw. And obviously in the forward position, that means the auger is going forward. But earlier on, I talked about the obstructions that can happen when using a snow thrower, which is why we have that R functionality. I put it in reverse, I can now remove whatever obstruction is there. On the right side, we have the same joystick controls that are familiar with the other attachments. The one in the center, of course, raises or lowers the thrower. On the right-hand side, you have the ability to angle the chute, right or left. Remember that 210 degrees of rotation we talked about. On the left-hand side, you have the ability to tilt the end of the chute. All right, so right at the fingertips on both sides, I can operate this entire thrower. So next, I'm excited to introduce the new BRX48 hydraulically driven brush. Now you might be thinking, why would I need a brush for snow ice control? Well, if you think about it, you can't really beat a brush for things like stamped concrete. Anywhere there's deviations in the concrete, contours, that brush can flex and actually pull that ice and snow up out of those areas, giving you a nice clean surface. Now let's take a look at some of the details on this and you're going to really see how this is going to be a piece of equipment you're going to need. Next, what I want us to look at is the actual brush on the BRX48. Now, we of course have designed this out of some high durable material, all right? So it's gonna give you a long life. It's gonna actually last a long time. But there's gonna be points where you're gonna have to replace it. It's gonna wear down. Which is why when we designed this, we made it extremely easy to service, all right? With the removal of a little bit of hardware, you can take the segments off and replace them easily. Now, there's also a point where you're gonna be taking this off the machine. And there's a lot of weight here. And what you don't want is that weight to be sitting on the brush, bending these, all right? That's gonna give you a flat spot, which is why we've installed jack stands on both sides of the unit. So that when you detach it, you lower the jack stands and that's supporting the weight, not causing that deformation. Next, let's take a look at the caster wheels on the back and get a good understanding of the role they play in this brush.
So now what we're looking at here on the back side is the dual caster wheel setup that we have. Now the reason for the caster wheels is to actually kind of take the load off of the brush itself and make sure that you're not putting too much down load on the brush causing either deformation or early wear. So these are actually a good thing. They kind of minimize that pressure. Now these wheels are actually rotatable 360 degrees on both sides and there's also a grease fitting in the axle of the wheel itself which of course increases longevity. Now the reason that you're going to want to adjust these is for two reasons really. One is to minimize the pressure but the other one is as the brush wears you can pick that caster wheel up making better contact with the surface. Next what I want to look at is the gearbox and how to lubricate the chain. So now what we're going to look at is the drive chain and the gears that actually rotate this broom. Now you know that everything is hydraulically driven, so here's your hydraulic drive motor, which is the high flow motor. This connects to a gear which goes to a chain which actually drives that brush. And it, with any type of a chain, there's going to be times where you're going to have to do some adjustments there. And we make it really simple. You take a cover off, there's four screws, you adjust the motor according to the calibration marks we have here, and you put the proper tension on the chain. Another thing that you're going to have to do with this chain is you know, you have to lubricate it from time to time. So right on the top here of the housing, we have a plug that you take off, and it's got a hole in the center. You place that back over, you add your lubricant to the cap, and let it drain off. You're doing that while the brush is rotating, and you're lubricating your chain. Once that's done, you simply put the cap back in place, and you're ready to go. Next, what I want to take a look at is the hydraulic quick connections for the BRX48. Now as you look at the control panel here, you have two larger diameter connectors on the right hand side. These are your high flow circuit. This is what you're going to connect to the hoses that give you the speed and the power that you need for the brush. The other two that you see here are simply used for angling right or left. Now they're smaller diameter and it doesn't matter which one you go to, it's operator preference by which joystick they want to activate. So up to now, we've shown you a lot of the capabilities that this machine has for moving snow. We've shown you that we can plow it, we can throw it, and we can brush it. Now let's look at what we have for de-icing. So the next tool for de-icing that I want to talk about for the Snow Rider Mag is the brand new TGS 85. This is a smaller, compact broadcast spreader that actually still holds 50 pounds of material. Now this thing is perfect for wider spaces, all right, bigger areas than just a sidewalk. It can actually throw that material at a 90 degree pattern to the left rear of the machine. All right, so better for bigger spaces. Now it does have a poly lid, which has an easy opening. And on the top is a top screen that as you're pouring material through it, it'll actually kind of break up that material into the sizes that you need for spreading. Now when it's in operation, like I said, it's throwing it off to the left rear. But if you want to choke that down, we do have baffle plates that can be adjusted here. Simply by turning the knobs, I can actually kind of choke this down and control the pattern in which it throws. Keep in mind, the deflector plate on this side never allows the material to hit the operator when it's spreading. All right, so again, it, it actually kicks everything out to the rear and behind the operation of the machine. But I want you to know, this can also be mounted to the original Snow Raider, giving a broadcast option for that smaller model. Next, I want to show you how to attach and detach this from the machine. Once the TGS-85 is actually installed on the machine, taking it on and off is a very simple process. All you have to do is disconnect the two pin spinner wires. You've got a pin on the side that you pull out to the detent position. It comes right off. Now, to reattach the spreader, just do that in reverse. You pull the pin out to the detent position, pick up the spreader, place the hooks on the pin, push it into position, Snap the pin in place, and then reconnect your spinner wires. 
Now the second de-icing option we have for the Schnorder Mag is the Exact Path. Now this is the exact same Exact Path model as is used on the current Snorators right now. The big difference here, however, is we don't need that salt chute on the front of this Exact Path. Now the reason it was on the previous Snorator is to actually kind of direct that salt so that it wasn't laying up on the frame of the plow. Well, since we designed this from the ground up, we don't have any of that framing like we did on the current model. So there's no need for that salt chute on this exact path. Now, the location that the exact path is mounted on the Snorator Mag is right on that hood. And remember, earlier in the video, we talked about how that hood opened and gave you access to all those things that you need for service and maintenance. The battery, the hydraulic filter, all those things, right? Well, even with this mounted, we still wanna have access to that. And it's a very simple process. Simply unhook each of these latches on each side of the front cover. This easily removes with no tools. I have a quick pin on each side of the hood that I rotate out. And now my hood pops open and I have access to those critical things. Now, when you're connecting the exact path to the Snowbear Mag, it is an extremely fast and easy setup. In fact, it connects to the hood and engineering has already lasered in the holes for mounting this to that hood plate. So as you can see, the Snow Raider Mag brings power, performance, and versatility to the job. Keep an eye open for more information coming from Boss on this new release. Thank you today for watching, and remember, when snow and ice hits, Boss helps you restore order.